We're rolling, rolling. And we are live. Welcome back to the Rhino Podcast. Good morning, Caitlin. It's above 60 degrees and I have iced coffee as God intended. Oh. Oh, only above 60 degrees. You dr- I, so I, it could be zero degrees outside and I will drink iced coffee. It's like, oh, that's like, it's, oh my God. it's like, what? it's like, be, it's I, like if it were 85 degrees and I drank hot coffee, that's a psycho move too. Is it really? Yeah. Like, I, feel like, I feel like, I'm sorry, but like you're in like that Gen Xer generation where like you just like drink like black coffee, like all the time. Like, I, I don't know. Like, and you are you know a, a, a horrible millennial who, uh, what a half decaf, we'll double decaf soy coffee. chai, something. No, I don't drink the. I I drink a venti iced coffee with a little bit of almond milk because I don't like all the dairy, and then two stevia. That is it. Okay. Oh, um, like I'm not like crazy. Like I want a double americano and like blah blah, blah filled halfway through up to the cup and. You know what I'm talking about, like that that crazy. <laughs> like you know, remember, you know, like when you go to Starbucks and like walk in, you see like their pickup counter, and like you see some mm-hmm. of these drink orders, and you're like, "That's psycho!" Like, what yeah. the fuck did you order? That I, they're they're high maintenance, high maintenance people. What would you say the gender of the complicated orders leans towards? Wait, what? The gender the of the more complicated, complicated let's okay. think all right, we're gonna get into oh, okay. charts. The, the, the are rhino you really getting into like, oh, it's the females that get the complicated crazy ass words. Okay, that yeah. could be true. It could be true. If we were really going to pull, that could be true. We but could, I, I've could. I've seen some dudes we I've seen some dudes get some like really frilly, really frilly like drink orders at Starbucks. All right, to put to put it in Jordan Petersonese, uh, <laughs> like what do you think the, um, the the average? All right, so it, it leans in the direction, right? I I didn't do a good Jordan Peterson there, sorry. Um, but on the whole, the more complicated the order, what's the likelihood of the person's gender? Probably female. Probably like female. Probably female. Okay, I- but my drink order is not complicated. Well, it is you, not. You bring the average to the other side here. Um, yeah, I, I get a non-complicated. I don't like complicated drinks. Well, that's good. It, it, it's. I don't a, even like, like alcoholic drinks. I don't like complicated. Like, I don't even like the mixed yeah, drink. I uh, like, yeah, I like a beer or a wine. Very good. The high maintenance aspect and the complicated um, aspect of people's uh, orders. I probably there is a correlation to how insane they are. And Caitlin, I'm going to direct you to the tr- uh, chart that is oh. now, now on the screen because we are going to start with Amber Heard. Now I'm going to have to. Oh boy, she's you know what? the the screen for the folks at home is cutting off here. Let me see if I can move this. Uh, ooh, no, that was bad. Okay. No, they can see it. I can see it. Yeah, but the unicorn is... is uh, Okay, all right. So basically, some of you have seen this chart before, and this is a very important chart. This is the universal hot crazy matrix. And if you've been following the Johnny Depp uh, trial uh, with Amber Heard, who uh, it's ha- hashtag Amber Turd, because apparently she took shit in the bed, which is funny to me. Uh, purposely did it. Who does who do, who does that, Caitlin? I mean, she she dropped her pants and took a shit on the bed because that's how mad she was a, as an adult. A crazy person does that. A crazy person does that. And what do you think of this chart? And I'm going to start. Let's start with the left side of this chart. You have to say one second. Go when ahead. I was watching, when I was watching Aquaman, all I could think about is that she shit the bed. You knew okay. You wait. You knew I didn't know she shit the bed until um until after, no, that's until been, the trial. That's been out for a while. That's been out for a long time. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Um, because it's like their drama has been around for a long time, and there were things that like came out about their relationship where I was like, 
I just don't see Johnny Depp being like super crazy like this. Like I like none of this has come out about him before, but like Amber Heard has had rumors of her being like fucking crazy for a long time. This is well, the left side of the chart maintains that all women um, have some level of crazy. It's just a question of how much crazy you're going to be putting up with. Um, and I bring into this question because we've also tagged AOC in this post, who got into it with Elon, um, and Elon was very smart. He, it, it, The left really needs to just – here's the reason why they really don't want him buying out Twitter, because they're bad at Twitter. They're bad at the internet. They don't understand – what um, – they're just so polluted intellectually that they don't understand what humor is, um, what a cogent point is, how to make a winning argument. So they flail aimlessly. And a few months ago when AOC was saying that all of her detractors uh, are, are just picking on her because they want to date her, uh, Elon brought that full circle when she went after him. Um, for buying a social media company and saying, oh, what, you're just, you know, I don't want to date you. I'm kind of shy. Uh, it was glorious. And wh wait, what did you call it before the before we went on? Uh, the ratio? What? Like, it was a certain kind oh, of... Oh, like he, he, he complete like he like ratioed her by like, he like triple, right? Triple? Like he, I, yeah, like the number that of likes that he had was triple the number that she had. What scale of crazy would you say she is on if amber heard is close to 10 on the y-axis where's it mean, because of the politics thing i would say that she's an eight an eight i mean I, I don't think she'd shit the bed i don't think she'd shit the bed either i agree with that um but but I think, like, lefty politics, when you get that far left, are, like, so insane and, like, not on, like, any plane of reality that, like, you, you're you crazy. Like, that's one of the things where I just, with her, I don't get it. Like, the things that she supports are just, like, childish and immature. I'm going to have to go with, um, let me see here. I, I'd have to go you said with one out of ten. I said if Amber Heard is a 10, I said 8, okay? I don't think AOC is that crazy. This is not the stupid scale. This is the crazy scale. I would say she's more like a 6.5, a, a 7. So if we follow that chart, we no, crazy, crazy, not intelligence, crazy. All right, so if we follow that chart, we follow, say it's, all right, let's say it for 8, uh, we go to the right uh, in order to be in the fun zone, which is, I'm going to move, I'm going to do some wizardry here with our, I'm going to shrink us in the screen here. Okay. And then I'm going to do that. Oh, look at that. I'm amazing with this. I made everybody able to see the full zone here. Um, if AOC is a crazy eight, she has to be to get into the fun zone, a six and a half to seven on the hot scale. Now, she's a congressional hot, but on the real hot scale, what are we talking about here? So you said that she on the hot axis is a four? No. What did you say she was on the hot on the I'm, hot I'm asking that question. Does she fall into the fun zone? Or... I think she'd be in the fun zone. Like danger zone is like Amber Heard shitting the bed and like cutting cutting Johnny Depp's hand. Like yeah. that's danger. Yes. I don't see AOC ever being dangerous. No, she. I think she lands squarely in the fun zone. I would say that. I mean, for one guy, she has a boyfriend. He's she's in the date zone. Yep, she's in the fun zone. I would I would say that. Now Amber Heard is another story here. She is as hot as she is crazy. I don't think she's hot. Like, that's the thing. Like, I'm, I don't get it. I don't get it. She's not hot to me. I, no. But I'm also a woman, and... That might factor into it. She does she's not, like, at no point in time does she cross into the threshold of the fun zone 
or the date zone. Amber Heard. Um, yeah. I, um, I, it's strictly danger the, zone. It's strictly danger zone. And you have to have a very good radar for this. Because obviously, if she were incredibly ugly, that's the no go zone. And she's in, in, you know, that notice how the tolerance on the where the X and the Y meet as we get closer to zero. And notice how the crazy axis, the Y axis, starts at four. Did you notice that? <laughs> it, it doesn't start at zero. <laughs> it starts at four. Uh, and that's important because uh, all level, the minimum level of crazy um, for, well, women uh, doesn't go all the way down to zero. It starts at four. So, well, I, yeah, yeah, no. Okay. Like I, you know, men like to number women. I get it. Um, I, I, think it's, <laughs> I, I, hey, I number men, like, let's be perfectly honest, like, there are men that I think are hot, and one of them is, you know, John Ossoff in glasses. I also think that John, Josh Ali is hot on a congressional scale. Um, the, con but, right, the congressional scale, what's the diff what's the um, tolerance there? What, what do I, what, we, grade, we grade on the curve for congressional. What do you think? I mean, like, I mean, the, ugly, the ugliest U.S. senator is Chris Murphy. Okay. Probably like second is like Chris Coons, but they're like threes. Or, or, I think I think Chris Murphy is like a brown bagger. Like he, his face disgusts me. I'm sorry, he's a one or maybe a zero. Yeah, but and Chris Coons is like five three. Where does uh, Kirsten Cinema fall? Because well, you were earlier the, this on, week on the Senate on the Senate scale for dudes like. Guys literally watched a video of her getting like hounded by a lefty protester on repeat to see her cleavage. I don't like, know about that. I mean, well, look, it came out earlier this week. Was it earlier this week about how she gets more attention from Republicans based on her cleavage? Or was that an old, old article she talked no, about? No, that was a new article. I guess it's going in a book. <laughs> it's going in hey, a book. Hey, like, that's the thing. Like, if you've got a nice rack, show it off, get the votes. Like, you got your stuff for the state of Arizona. Like, I... She's attractive. I, I, what, what, what makes she, on, her on, on congressional scale, though? Okay, on congressional scale. So that means that you're taking the real world down from the real world, right? I think the congressional scale either adds or subtracts two points depending on your what, which indirect, which direction, right? So if, if you're a regular person and you're a six. You know, you're a congressional eight, right? Because you're in Congress, right? So, but it gives you it gives you two points. Kristen Sinema would be, well, she would be a nine. Yeah, she'd be a nine. She, congressional. She's a congressional she's, nine. She's a seven. Right, and Nancy Mace is like a congressional ten. Yeah, everyone saw that all yeah. that 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 surfing lesson picture on Insta. Hey, yeah. man, like I I'm not judging. I am not judging. I get Dan to Crenshaw. Dan Crenshaw is a congressional 10. Arguably, arguably an 11. He's a handsome that, man. That that video of him throwing axes was pretty hot. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Guy's beefcake. I think Josh Ali is hot. I think no, he's no, hot. No, he's got that. Okay. He's got that. You and I will not see eye to eye. I, I almost see your Not dog. Josh Ali. I also think John Ossoff in his glasses is hot. John Ossoff arguably is better looking than Josh Holly. From if we're oh going about that, oh I, I, Josh Holly looks like he's got the televangelist hair and that that look. You know, it, no, I, I. But like, let's let's talk about who else is hot in Congress. I think uh, Maria Salazar is like super hot for her age. There's also hot and really good looking. So what what makes cinema really hot? Because like, as opposed to like, you know, just. Well, she has her own opinion. That's kind of hot. right, right. But she's also she's also like a bit badass with how she deals doles out her opinion and what she's doing. You know, she doesn't um, pander. She's just like fuck you all and just stands on her own, and that like adds another half a point to her hotness. Um, whereas, like you, you you see the ones that just want to get on camera or just do it for attention or they, you know, the, the follows and the likes on Instagram that aren't, that aren't serious about their job, AOC, 
you know, the, like these are unserious people, right? So the un, the more serious they are about their job, the hotter it is. Okay. Now, to wrap up the crazy hot, uh, universal hot crazy matrix, um, towards the right hand side, we see several categories here. The date zone, the wife zone, and the unicorn. That would be somebody who's a 10 and under the scale of 50-50 for crazy. All right, let's, so let's work our way to the bottom here. Unicorns do not exist, right? There's nobody who's that hot. And th there is a proportional level that the further hot you go, the more you're willing to put up with the crazy, but also there's less likely to be crazy. So essentially there's nobody, I mean, you have to go down really low on the hot scale to get to the lowest part of the crazy scale. Would you concur with this, Caitlin? Yeah. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. Uh, find yourself somebody who's under seven on the crazy scale and above the eight on the hot scale and that's where you get wife, okay? And I will say, I will say, you know, these are sliding scales. People can be crazy at certain points in their life and less crazy at other points in their life. Obviously, you can be hot at some points in your life and less, and, uh, and less hot at points in your life. So find that balance and find the right person for you, um, whether or not uh, you find them for a long-term uh, wife situation, like poor Johnny Depp, or if you find it for a short-term amount of fun. Moving on. Just a few hours ago, Tulsi Gabbard tweeted this, and I am going to pull it up here. He's, he's been on this for like a week now since it was reported. So she tweets, um, Biden is just a front man. Obama, April 21st, social media censors don't go far enough. So the government needs to step in to do the job. Six days later, Homeland Security rolls out the Ministry of Truth, a.k.a. Disinformation Governance Board. Now, as somebody who wants to be the future chair or director of the Disinformation Board, <laughs> I think we'd be great at that. Would You know. Who, I mean, I mean, it's clear, like, that's the thing, like, the concept of it even existing is so insane to me, right? Like, that you're allowing the government to discern what's misinformation or not. And uh, at some point, it's kind of beyond parody. I mean, and the woman who's running it is just like, so she's a, she is bonkers now. Okay, going back to the hot crazy scale, like, how the hell did she get picked? Have you seen the videos of her singing? and talking I, and she's and she's she's talented when she sings but i just think that being in your 30s and going on tiktok and doing uh harry potter and broadway numbers is not professional for yeah it's embarrassing and not professional for a federal uh bureau head i maybe that's just me um but the concept of this existing really concerns me because i think that it's a very much a freedom of speech um violation i think that this is yeah. going to be considered unconstitutional and you know I, it concerns me that the dems went to this there it was interesting they announced it was going to be created and then they didn't really talk about it until like the next day when they said it was supposed to be their first job was to stop misinformation coming across the border and i think that that was red meat to conservatives um w which we all know it's kind of bullshit that wasn't yeah. what it was no. created for no it, and it's weird how this came out and yet none of them really talked about it. So they know. They know. Well, I, I'm I think I think I think this I think the hearing with Mayor uh, Secretary Mayorkas that um, where we found this out was kind of enlightening. Um, Mayorkas thinks that there's no problem at the border at all. Like he mm. and he just is not he's just not he does not have a good clutch on reality, I think. Um, or he oh, is he's lying. lying. Or, he's lying for partisan reasons. I mean Mayorkas had had ethical issues coming into this role and um, being nominated and confirmed in general. Um, I think that if the Republicans take the House, um, I think that he is a weak spot on the cabinet. Yeah. Um, I think I actually think that um, this will get me a lot of probably a lot of people shitting on me. 
I think that Mayor Pete is actually one of the weaker um, cabinet positions on um, the cabinet right now, Secretary of Transportation. Um, so I think that Republicans are going to start targeting these cabinet seats, and they should. I mean, Mayorkas is, the, the, he was corrupt before, and he's just lying now. So It's a sad state of affairs when Marty Walsh, your labor secretary, is arguably your strongest member of your cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and I'm looking at the entirety of the cabinet. I'm not saying Marty Walsh is particularly strong, but in the in the context of the cabinet, he's one of. I mean, the Marty stronger. Walsh. Marty Walsh only knows anything about the bureau of, or the secret the Department of Labor because he's a big union guy. Like that's basically but the they, people who are filling these positions have no idea what the fuck they're doing, and right. it's kind of crazy and it's concerning because like. I think that there's this like meme among lefties that like when Republicans come into office, the people who become secretary don't know what they're doing. And I think that that's wrong. Yeah. Um, Mayor Pete has no I has no idea how to run a federal uh, agency. He no idea. I mean, and he knows nothing about transportation or supply chain issues. We already know that. You know, we have huge, massive supply chain issues right now, and so. Um, but Mayorkas, I think, is the big one because, you know, immigration and all of that falls under Department of Homeland Security. And he concerns me the most because he's just he's lying. Like, you, it's not gaslighting. You're not confused. Like, that's the thing. I, I, I want that distinction. You're not confused about what's going on at the border. Um, he's lying to you. I, le- I You said that last week, and I really like that idea. And we and. We should push that more that we're not being gaslit because you said that gaslit implies that we're stupid enough to believe your lies and we're not. They're just lying. They're you're, just not lying. Confu- you're not. You're not. You're confu- not. Yeah, you are not confused. Stop using the word gaslit like you're not confused about what's going on. The information is out there. They're lying to you. And yeah. that's that's the thing that you need to um, focus on. They're lying to back to Tulsi's point. Do you think Obama is running things behind the scenes i think it is not a coincidence that obama had headlined this um disinformation conference and is hardcore going on to this dim- uh, disinformation um talking point um and then we see the creation of this yeah i don't uh, think it's a coincidence yeah i mean i guess we've wondered you know we talk about ron clain running things but who really what does ron clain know how to do who's the power still behind it you know he was a t- two-term I think president um, let me get this point out. I think Barack Obama knows that Joe Biden is fucking us up. Okay. Trust me. On the back end, we've read enough political articles where Obama was not a huge fan of Joe Biden in general and ran with him just to get the, you know, white working class vote in 20, uh, two, 2008 and 2012. Okay. We know that. Okay. But I think that he is currently trying to help the Democratic Party by putting forth these talking points because he still has a lot of cultural significance and Dems will listen to him on the back end because he knows that Joe Biden is full of fucking shit. Like everybody knows that Joe Biden is full of shit and he's not running this administration well. That's the reason why his polling is so awful. Like the facade after the Afghanistan withdrawal fell down. Um, and so, yeah, I think Obama is trying to help with the talking points as much as possible. I think that these came out of some marketing firm for the Dems. Directed by Obama? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Obama is really good on this kind of thing. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that I think that, like, he has so much cultural sway, but I think that his cultural sway is really waning. I don't think it's as strong as it used to be because when he used to talk, people, liberals used to just believe him. I think the far left thinks that he's full of shit now. And, um, you know, he didn't achieve a lot of the things that they wanted during his presidency that he promised and to the progressive side, the progressive coalition. And Joe Biden is clearly failing on that as well. Um, And so, you know, (sighs) It's interesting to see that, you know, Obama after the 2008 recession or, you know, after that recession couldn't create a consensus like FDR did, like he was not able to do it. And I think that that shows where the United States is going as a country. I think that we're very much center right, even though we like our welfare, fell our welfare programs. Um, and that's why one of the reasons why you see the GOP not um, running on breaking them down anymore or hardcore reform, but it, but it, essentially, I think Obama's losing grip with that social aspect. 
you know, there's been a lot of talk in the past couple of weeks with they're talking about Biden's you know, running in 2024 and, you know, every, all the Democrats are talking about how, gonna, how they're going to support him, which tells me that he's probably not running in 2024. Um, what, no, I think I think Obi- I think Biden will run. I, I don't think he'll make it. His mental state two years is so long. No, I think I, I, think I just don't that, think he physically. Think, yeah, I think that Republicans uh, I don't like doing uh, forecasts or anything like that. I think we have a strong chance of taking back the White House in 2024. I oh, think yeah, that yeah. we're regardless. My question to you, uh, my question yeah, to you, the situation is not going to get better. Um, I think that we're headed for a recession if we yeah. I mean, we have all the economic data. We need a couple more um, cycles of that. Uh, negative growth in order to call it a recession but i yeah i i don't have a lot but, and i don't think that i don't think that P, i don't think mayor pete's gonna be able to handle the department of transportation and all of the supply chain issues in order to bring a recession um under control my in- qu- but I, my question to you is i don't think if if biden doesn't finish his term and i think there's a reasonable chance it might not happen it's not it's not zero and that's who do, who do you think the future vice president would be because right because so 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 he resigns or the you know 25th amendment you know sometime after the elections in 2022 kamala harris is now president i don't know who she'd help us but they have to i don't know right vp has to be i don't know see i don't know see that's the thing like with her because i think that her sphere of influence um within the coalition is so weird like, I don't think anybody really likes her. So, like, the thing is, is, like, you know, people have their opinions about Joe Biden. They had it back in 20, 2008 and 2012. They had their opinions about it, but he was still within the coalition, right? Yeah. Like, and I just don't know who would be an ally for her. I'm going to, uh, there won't be, I don't know about an ally, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say one thing. This is, I'm going to be give a little bit of free advice to the Democrats to get out of this if they want to recapture the White House, which in 2024. Joe, for many reasons, would have to, you know, resign, health. Okay, Kamala's president. She would not be make a good <laughs> general election candidate in 2024. You appoint or have Deval Patrick, former governor of Massachusetts, who is a good campaigner, and a reasonably yeah. competent manager to either be a vice president or plan a campaign. Now, here's the thing. I mean, can you imagine her being president and then Deval Patrick come in, who's been like an executive before? Like, that's one of the things I don't think a lot of people understand. Like she ran, she was attorney general. That's still kind of an executive position over an agency in California. Mm-hmm. She ran it poorly. We know that. Um, even though she won because California is just so hardcore blue now. Um, do you think Deval Patrick would like that being number two to get his, maybe he, here's get his- the, here's the thing about that. I, I think he'd be the, the idea behind that would be for a 2028 run or something like that, because you'd have to go with Kamala at the top of the ticket or, you know, challenge Kamala going into 2024 and he's not VP and you pick somebody else. In my mind, I, I don't see, I don't know anybody. I see Mayor. The thing is, is, I see Mayor Pete being like their next Robert Kennedy, you know, like the facade and all that. I, no. the, the thing is, is that the Dems are really good at creating the myth, right? Like they're very good at creating the cultural movement behind somebody, right? And so I, I think that Mayor Pete, I think, I think he has a lot of social capital and a lot of people behind him who think that he's good. He's not, but I, I mean. I don't know. I think that we, they create the myth. I don't think Deval Patrick has that cultural sway that he do pro- that. Probably Even though not. He's a hard, I'm not. I'm not trying to say that he's not like a good manager or like a good campaigner. Yeah. But I, I think that with the Dems, you have to create that myth. Their their bench is so shallow. Yeah. I just I don't know where they go other than him. I mean, their bench was shallow in 20. The thing is, their bench was shallow in 2020, but it was full I mean, of a bunch of people. There could, have been, there could have been some that, you know, maybe there's some obscure Dem governors, but they, you know, if they're, 
if they don't fit, check the right boxes, it's not happening. And maybe who Andy Bashir of Kentucky? I, maybe who barely who barely won is probably going to be voted out. Maybe I don't. But I mean, look prior to the pandemic, it might have been like Cuomo, but that won't happen now, right? <laughs> so it's I mean, like. He's trying to make a comeback, right? Like yeah, that's I'm, the thing. I'm trying to like like scan up and down their their bench, and there's just I don't, you know, maybe somebody will pop up out of nowhere. I mean, honestly, if, if they want no, you know what, <laughs> you know who they should nominate. In Ew. all honesty, if we not not talking about her, Kirsten Cinema. They're not going. to. They're not going to. They're not going to. But she did. She so did I, the best I, shot. Thing, right like she's a centerist right like that would have to take the left coming back to the center right and like if the right is actually shifting to the center like that's mm-hmm. the thing like Ron Santos is like he's pretty like right here in the middle of that center right position like the 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 liberals have only done this over the years mm-hmm. on this like e chart of like this is center they've only done this a, the, a, the republicans have done this a true, you know, like, a true centrist Democrat would kick our butts for decades. They're not going to, but do they're not that, going though. to. We're lucky. We're lucky that way, no doubt. We're lucky, but you know, and and Deval Patrick is definitely to the left of Kirsten Cinema, but but he at least has the. He's not crazy. He's not you know leftist uh, in his ideology. Anyway, all right. We shall see what the midterms bring uh, next week or in the next two weeks. Maybe we have some good things planned. Uh, we're gonna we'll keep you tuned. Stay stay on our Twitter and uh, all the socials uh, as as Caitlin and I kick around some ideas. Uh, we've got convention coming up in about three weeks, so hopefully something will be fun there. Um, anything else, Caitlin? Before we uh, leave our fine audience. No, everybody have a really great week this week. It's supposed to be. I'm so happy that like. <laughs> The spring is like one month in Massachusetts, yeah. so I'm so happy it's here. April sucked. It was too cold. It was one warm day, and I think that, yeah. I, literally one warm day. So finally, we get some yeah. warm weather around here. Enjoy spring, and the sun is shining, so get out there. Get some fresh air, everybody, and enjoy your Sunday. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>